Und zwar hören wir gleich Johanna Engmann aus Stockholm. Sie ist der Chief Information Officer der Stadt und sie sagt, ähm, Stockholm soll in ein paar Jahren die smarteste Stadt Europas sein. Gleichzeitig aber ökologisch, sozial und ökonomisch nachhaltig. Und wie das zusammengeht, davon erzählt sie uns gleich selbst. Herzliches Willkommen. Hi, can you hear me? Isn't that a brave statement that we're going to be the world's smartest city? But uh, we're not going to be able to do this by ourselves. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, a bit about, um, a lot about open data because I thought that's what you wanted to hear about mostly. Now I'm going to see if I... So this is my information if you want to get in contact with me. This is Stockholm, if you don't know about this. It's the capital of, uh, Stock of Sweden and Stockholm. And uh, we're almost soon one million inhabitants. So it's not a big city if you compare to many cities in Europe or in the world. But in Sweden, we are by, like twice as big as the next city, which is Gothenburg. And uh, we have uh, a lot of administrations, we do a lot of things uh, in Stockholm or that the municipalities in Sweden has the responsibility for us, all from harbors to uh, building roads to elder care to childcare to schooling and we have theatres, we have culture, we have water plants etc. So it's a really wide spectrum of uh, operations that we are doing. And uh, we have three goals that our board has put up. And uh, every organization within Stockholm City, even if it's a company or another operation, then we are following these three goals. And we think that that makes us uh, an organization that can really have a power when we're working towards them, because everyone is working towards the same goals. And then it's uh, getting a much greater impact than if we put up our own goals. And uh, what we're working on is being a sustainable city. We're going to be sustainable when it comes to finance, when it comes to eco and friendly, and when it comes to being a social uh, welfare and uh, being sustainable there, that you, people in Stockholm are going to be able to live an independent life and take care of themselves as much as possible and don't have to have the aid of the public sector unless they need to. We have the, I think we have the same challenges as most cities in the Western world has, especially in, in Europe. We have a, a growing population in Stockholm. Uh, a lot of people are moving into the city every day. We have at the same time an elder uh, population. Uh, we, a lot of people are uh, getting older and uh, we are then having a lot of people of staff that are retiring that we have to replace. And what we see is when we look at the demographic, we see that it's going to be fewer people who have to support more people. So the equation is not uh, really working out. We're not going to be able to hire as many people as are retiring, which means that we do have to do the things we're doing in another way, unless we have to cut things we are doing. Uh, we have the environmental change uh, and uh, challenge that you're putting through as well. We need to uh, decrease our footprint that we are uh, uh, getting from, from our, the public sector and from the civil sector as well. That's another goal. And as long as, even if we have an elderly population, we also have a lot of younger population and they are uh, having other needs than uh, we had when we were in school. We say that 72% of the two year olds are using the internet. So then they're coming to preschool and then they're coming to schools when they are growing up and getting children of their own, they're going to have an, 
totally different expectation on what uh, public sector is going to provide and how we're going to provide the services than the people who are getting the services today. So we have to uh, find out what do they need and what do they expect us to provide. Because we are not providing our services for ourselves, we are providing them for the Stockholmers. And it's them that's going to be satisfied and they are going to get the needs and the services that they need and they want. And as I said, if we're going to do this, we're not going to be able to do this on ourselves. We have to do this together. We have to do, do this together with other cities and other municipalities in Sweden. We have to do it on the uh, state sector. We have to do it. We have to work together with uh, companies in uh, Sweden. We have to do it with uh, the universities. Uh, we have to do it with the rest of the world. Uh, we have to find things that are working in other places that we can do. We have to do things together. We have different uh, knowledges than uh, when we are working together with the university and company. They have d different knowledge than we have, and we have things that they need. And if we do this together, then I think it's going to be a lot better for, for the people living in Stockholm. Because I don't think that the public sector should provide all the services that the citizens need. I think if, if the companies are also providing things that makes it easier to live, uh, then uh, they're not going to uh, need help from the society. And that means that they could live a more self-sufficient life, better life quality. And uh, we don't have to use the taxpayers' money for things that we, they don't need. So it's a win-win situation for all of us. And uh, what do we mean when we're talking about uh, a smart city in, uh, in Stockholm? Uh, I was in Barcelona with the Gartner conference yesterday, in the beginning of this week. And uh, we talked to uh, some cities from uh, in Holland, I don't think it was any in from Germany there, and uh, other parts of, of the world about smart cities. And Barcelona as well has talked about how they look at smart cities. And we look at it totally differently. I think it also depends on what do we have to provide for our citizens. And that varies between uh, different countries. If you go to uh, Singapore, for example, that's also, uh, also in the top of being a smart city, then uh, they don't have as much welfare as we do. Sweden and the Scandinavian countries has a lot of welfare uh, in, the, uh, in the laws that to provide for the citizens. And that also reflects what we think is a smart city. If we're going to provide services for them that are smart, then it also has to inflect on, on the social welfare sector. But in, in general, we talk about that it's going to, as I said, easier and better to be a Stockholmer, both to live here and run companies and visiting and being in Stockholm. We want it to be as easy as possible. Uh, and then when we talk about the smart city, then we talk about using the technology. You can do it in other ways as well, but what I'm talking about now is how can we use technology to make this a smart city. We also say that uh, the smarter city or the best is uh, digitalization is the one that you don't see. And this is a park in the center of Stockholm. And uh, when uh, you visit there, you can do a lot of things with technology that you don't see, but that, that you can use. You can report uh, if there is something wrong in the park, that's a lamppost that is broken, then you can report it. You can look at your uh, children's uh, daycare, what they've been doing. You can look at what your children has been doing in school. Uh, if you can report if a child is sick, you can, we can measure the water. Uh, temperature and also the water quality. Instead of having people uh, running around in cars to measure the water, we have uh, indicators in the water that can, uh, sensors there that can uh, measure the water. And then you get a much uh, better uh, knowledge about the water uh, quality all the time. You can park, you pay for your parking ticket. If it's starting to rain, you can finish your parking ticket so you don't have to pay for hours and minutes that you're not using. So there's a lot of services you can do. When you are in the park, you don't see them. When you're running on the, uh, driving on the streets in Stockholm, uh, we have uh, sensors in the streets, so, so the traffic is moving uh, more smoothly, and uh, you don't have to stand at the red light unless you have to. And that also uh, 
makes it less pollution. We have lowered the pollution by 30-40% by uh, affecting the traffic. And we are continuing working on that. And so as I said, we don't do this alone. And if we're going to do this, we need to know what the citizens need. Because if we don't know what they need, then we're going to uh, definitely build a city that they don't expect or they don't want. And this is the biggest challenge, I think, that we have. Because if you have any dialogue with the citizens, how do you know that they are representing the major part of the citizens, that you're not just getting the small part that has a special interest and that the ones who are really pleased and like the way it is, that they are sitting at home and thinking, I'm pleased, I don't need to, to interact here. And then you make decisions and you're changing the society and the, the structure of the society from a really small population of inhabitants that's not really uh, are uh, in the same as, as the majority is thinking, and then people are getting uh, disappointed. But we're trying to do this in different ways because we have to get their information, we have to get what they are thinking. And um, we are, so, so we're doing it in different ways. We're doing it with young people uh, and entrepreneurs to see what are they doing? We we put them into a problem or a situation. Say like, how would you uh, change this, or how would you solve this problem, if it was up to you? Or do what do you want in this area? How do you want to live? What do you want to do, etc. Uh, we have um, a citizen panel uh, that we are testing, and we're uh, going to go wider with. And then we have uh, other ways of doing it. What's that? There. This is what we're doing with the, with the younger people. In one area of the Stockholm, we are going to put up smart lightning. And we're going to use different techniques to see which technique is you, we're going to work best for us. But we also had then, what, what do we want with this area? What do we want to do? So if we uh, had a, a panel or, or a workshop with a long, lot of young people in the area, and they ha got to say, like, what do we need? How do we think that smart lightning is going to be in the best way? And then we are testing this in, 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 in the area. And that way we can evaluate if, if they were right or not, or if it's uh, working. We can also evaluate then which technique was the best to do this. Um, they have the smart uh, traffic project that is also in a, in a uh, small area. Uh, some people say that piloting is a bad thing, that they just have so much pilot pro projects that then it's like in a waste ban. I think that uh, we need to have pilot projects, but we have to have a really have an idea what we want to do and then see if we can scale it up. Because we can't get out on the deep water before we have tried to learn how to swim. And uh, this is an area and the uh, factor is that we want to uh, see if we can get traffic to move more smoothly and, uh, le uh, and then not getting to stop at the red light as much. We want uh, specifically the public transportation to, have, uh, to get priority. We also want uh, like the police, the ambulance and the fire... Uh, um, get I lost it. Uh, the fire brigade to be able to, to move uh, faster so they can uh, get to their mission as fast as possible. Here we had a panel with uh, the entrepreneurs and see uh, what they want because at the same time as we're doing that we're going to have uh, indicators or, or uh, that are collecting information. Uh, sensors that collecting uh, information about uh, how many uh, cars is moving, how many people, pedestrians there, how many bikes. We could also measure then, the idea is to measure the uh, pollution or the uh, other things from the environment. And then we are working there with entrepreneurs to see what do they need and what uh, services do they think that you can build from this information? Or do they need other information to uh, uh, have for, for the services that they have a plan for? Uh, 
we had a, an open data project. And uh, this is also a pilot just to see how you can work. Here we are working together with uh, 26 different uh, uh, municipalities within the Greater Stockholm. We're 26 municipalities in the Greater Stockholm. And we've been working together to see could we find a way to sort our data in the same way. And uh, at this project, we also took to um, mid -size, small and mid-sized companies to see what information do they need. Because especially in Stockholm, we have a lot of information in, the, in an OPA data uh, that is open and shared. The problem is that, uh, what I say, is that we have it in um, not sorted. Uh, so it's like a, a dump yard where everything is like, go and look for whatever you want but you can't uh, collect all the information that regards maybe addresses because it's sorted in totally different ways from depending on which system has uh, put the data there. So what we want to do is that we want to go to like a recycling uh, uh, central where you can find data from addresses or from housing or, or, or different things. Then, because the problem is that even if it's open and shared, no one is collecting them because they don't know. It's taking too much time and it's too expensive to look for what you need in there. So, we, so this is a project to see, could we sort data in a way that uh, they really can find the information that they want? How do we need to put up the APIs to, to make it in, a, in the right way so, so, so they can find it? So we've been doing this for, for a couple of years, and, and it's been really successful. And uh, it's, it's just, as you see, it's a small area, it's our, but it's our 26 municipalities. It's the first project and first really successful project we've been doing in Sweden when we've been uh, collaborating. And uh, I think that uh, I think you have the same challenges as we have, and we have the same challenges as you have. To make a smart city, you have to have the data. And if you don't have the data, then you can't build the services that you need. And if you're going to have the data, then you have to have it sorted. And so there's a lot of work before you can build the smart city services. And uh, you also need a platform. You need to have a platform and infrastructure. And uh, we are uh, looking at doing procurement for an IoT platform. So that what we are doing from my administration is not building the services itself, but we, we are building in the platforms that they could uh, then connect to, whatever they say. We're saying that we're building a Lego, that we have the platform of Lego, and then they could, could build whatever they want to on that, but they can just use the Lego parts. They couldn't, can't go into Duplo or something else. But uh, then uh, the other organizations could, could build up on our platforms. And um, we have been doing some things to, to a, a lot of things to try and um, uh, try different techniques and try different things to make uh, the better uh, city for the uh, inhabitants of Stockholm. And um, you could use, uh, we have so much technique that you can use and that makes a lot of quality. Like we've been using old photos that we have stored in a data that we use in another way, just for elder people. And when you get a bit of dementia, uh, et cetera, then uh, if you see pictures of from, from your childhood or a memory, then you come alive, and then you can communicate with these people in a different way than you could otherwise. So just using pictures that you have could make it a much better life quality for, for elder people, which is such an easy way to do it. So it doesn't have to be hard, it doesn't have to be an advanced technology, you just have to know what you, what you want to do. And that's essential when it comes to building, I think, a smart city, is to really know what the citizens need and, their, and what they want. Uh, because that's what you have to take the, uh, the start from. You can't start, take the start from the technique and say, what can we use this technique from? You have to take the start from, what do we really want to happen in this city? What do we want this to be? And then say, like, okay, what technique can we use to make this happen?
I think I'm going to put them all here. Uh, what makes it hard? I think you recognize this. Uh, that what's in it for me? It doesn't matter. I have a lot of data, but I don't see where I can use it. Why should I put a lot of energy and money into making this open and shared uh, for someone else? And I don't see the need. I don't see the use for it. Uh, and then uh, that, they, that, they, that they don't want to. But I think this in lacking a, a, a prerequisite is that um, that's the main thing for everything when it comes to digitalization and changing is that the hardest part we have to do is not to use the technique. The hardest part we have to do is to change how we are doing every day and what we are doing. And it doesn't matter if it comes to, uh, to digitalization or other things. It's like if you're going to change your behavior, that is one of the hardest things you can do. It comes to culture and it can, comes to uh, what, you, what you need and what you know what to do. And uh, that's going to take a long time. So that's where you have to put most of the effort because people are not going to change just because you say you're going to change. So if you, if you have, it's like we said that putting on new things is not the hard part. The hard part is to take away what you're already doing and not doing that as well. Um, And it is said that we, on, the, on the left side there, we, we are uh, uh, working to get things to happen, which is really uh, good. We have to have this, you have to tell the stories. You have to have maybe small projects that are successful that you can talk about that this is working. So people understand that it's not so hard. It's not so hard. It's just you have to have the idea. So you have to need, know what to do with it and how you're going to use it. Uh, and uh, de uh, develop the right processes. That's the main factor. I mean, you really have to work on your processes. If you don't know what you're doing and how you're going to do it, then you're not going to be able to digitalize it. And uh, that's what you need to, uh, to do. And uh, you can start with that before you have the technique, because that's going to take some time as well. And you have to start talking to your, to your people staff or whatever you have, that you need to do things in another way tomorrow. Uh, in our constitutions, it says that everything we do in the public sector is public. That's by default. And then uh, we have to, uh, and that's default and it's public unless we can put it under uh, the law of secretess in some way. So if you're not going to uh, share things, then you have to know why you shouldn't share it. So, so we are starting with having uh, everything open, which is a good idea and helping because we don't have to discuss whether it should be open or not. And therefore we can also say that everything that is uh, data should be shared to everyone so they can use it. Uh, then uh, we, you, you talked before about uh, the safety and uh, with uh, digitalization and that's one other thing. Even if the data is open, and even if it's shared, uh, and the law says it should be so, digitalization it gets is another uh, dimension. Because if you take a lot of data together that is anonymous and it's not sensitive for me, one by one, together it could be that it's reflecting on me. And then GDPR kicks in and everything. So, so it's not as easy as it sounds, but uh, that's the default situation we are working with. But really, the, when you look at that, all data should be shared with respect and target group's needs. That's like when you put it together, you can use the data in a totally different uh, way. And uh, then we were thinking about from the start. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to, you were talking about that in the, in the start as well, that you have to do the, you, the um, information architecture. And that's what we have to do too. I mean, we are finding out that, that we need to know who's owning the data, because we don't really know that now. We have a lot of information, but we never sorted out who, who's the owner. Who's the owner of the telephone numbers for the city? We don't really know that. 
We have them in different systems. We have them in a lot of systems, but no one is us taking charge of, like, this is the information that's correct. So in different systems, you can put in different information or different te telephone number, depending on what you need, etc. And some say, like, oh, put in my private phone number. That's good for you to have when I'm sick or when something is happening. It's not a problem. But when you're then sharing this in other situations and you put them up, it's like, I don't want my phone number here. Of course you don't, but you put it in here and then things happen and it turns out in other areas than you were not expecting. So uh, you really have to control over your infra information architecture. And we, you have to have the high quality of the data and that comes to having the working with the information. This is the uh, citizen group uh, panel that we have. We are using the south part of Stockholm when we are working with uh, building um, uh, and planning for uh, development issues. So we have now 2,000 people that are participating in this panel. They get to answer about four to eight different uh, requests every year. The, these ones have to be different so they don't get think that it's boring. So it could be one thing could be like if you're going to build a road, the other one could build if you want to build a, a playground or a schooling, etc. So different things. That, that, and then <coughs> they answer these uh, questions and we are, think that we get a better panel than we are if we're just having an, an open um, arena. Because then we think that we are just getting the ones who are having a special issue or are uh, not so happy with how it is. We're going to uh, uh, enlarge this, so we're going to do it in, in the west part of the Stockholm as well, and then eventually it's going to be a whole city that we're going to use this. So this is another part of having to introduce uh, the um, inhabitants to be active. We also have a, a, an investigation that we put out every year, randomly to citizens. <coughs> Questions? <laughs> you had one there? Um, hello, my name is Christian Heider. I'm author of Unsere Gelder. Um, when you do panels and um, citizen involvement and pilot projects, you say, with other words, we don't know as administration. So please help. Please tell us how we can do that together. This uh, mindset is very unusual in Germany. So I think the citizens expect from the government that they know what to do and they don't ask people. So how did you get this mind change, this mindset changed for this openness, for this fault tolerance? I think we used to do that as well. We used to think that we knew everything. Uh, I still think that a lot of people in our organization think that they knew everything. Uh, but uh, some people, <laughs> and me including, think that if you if you ask people what they want and the need, then they're going to uh, have a, a good idea. Not many people want to participate to make it a bad city. Uh, and so far, I can't say that we you, you had that, but you could have a special, small interest that is just for you, and uh, and that could maybe take over if if we're just asking you and not a wider spectrum of the citizens. I think you have to have a specific idea on on uh, what area you're going to work and what you're going to do. So so it's not like what you want to. Maybe that's working. I don't know, but. I think that that's going to be hard to, to collect the information then if you just put out an area, what do you want to do here? Should it be like a playground? Should it be a parking lot? Should it be a shopping center? Should it be a school or, or et cetera? Because you, you also have the needs for the, for the city that we need to have so much schooling. We have to have so much uh, preschool. We have to have an elder care uh, housing, et cetera. So, so you have, I think you have to have an idea of what you're going to use the area for and then present that and then say, how could we do this in the best way? And what are your needs and what do you see in the future? Uh, because I think it's hard to say that's just a f few small 
group of, of uh, servants at the city office going to know what the whole citizens need and want. Uh, hi, my name is Matthias. I work as a consultant. And I'm curious, in the beginning of your lecture, you talked about the operational goals of the city of Stockholm. And I was wondering, in how far are citizens involved in setting those goals? That's political goals. Uh, that's the politicians that put them up. And uh, we have worked like that from uh, the beginning or the end of the 19th, uh, 1990. Uh, and uh, so they put up between three and four goals has been the, the and uh, that's what we're working towards and uh, that's the political agenda uh, but if uh, if not the politicians are running the agenda we are working towards then why should we have politicians so before we had about like 200 goals that are unsorted and uh, what's going to happen then if everyone could pick any goals they want between 200 because you can't uh, work with, with an effort towards 200 goals because then nothing's going to happen. So this way, I think we get more, much more efficiently and uh, much more effect. Uh, but uh, it's not open for discussion which is it going to be. That's, and that's what they are pre uh, like presenting when they are doing their uh, in, for for an election, the campaign for the election. Wir werden Frau Engmann nach, nachher nochmal auf dem Panel wiedersehen und äh, man kann mich und auch Sie in der Pause ansprechen, um möglichst viele Fragen dann noch unterzubringen. Wir müssen leider tatsächlich weitermachen. Nochmal ganz vielen Dank. Time's out, I guess. <lacht>